Hey, I'm Jameson Rackley, and I'm going to be talking about captivity narratives in American literature. I'm going to give three key points that will hopefully help you walk away with a better understanding of what a captivity narrative is. I will describe the definition of a captivity narrative, talk about the role it has played in American literature, and I will describe to you a famous captivity narrative from the 1600s. Uh, first off, a captivity narrative is a story of people who have been kidnapped and taken captive by people that they would describe as their enemies. They are held hostage. Oftentimes they're held for ransom. Um, they are forced to do things that they would not normally do. A lot of things that are against their religious practices. Um, and these are their stories of their experiences and the retellings of what happened to them while they were held in captivity. Um, the role that captivity narratives have played in American literature dates all the way back to the British coming to settle in America. Um, the English people came over and settled on Native American land and the Native Americans began to feel threatened and they decided to fight back by taking the English people and holding them hostage and um, holding them in captivity. And they would um, take them on long journeys and um, move them away from their settlement to get them out of their land um, and this began the stories of captivity narratives um, the, the British people began to write their stories down to um, talk about them and to get them published and this began the captivity narratives. Um, a famous captivity narrative is The Sovereignty and Goodness of God by Mary Rawlinson. Um, she was a part of the, um, the captivity of the Native Americans and she um, tells the story of how her family's um, colony gets invaded by Indians and they come and destroy their home and they take her family captive and um, she ends up being separated from her family. She has a young daughter who gets wounded and dies um, from the invasion and she is separated from her husband and her two other children who are also separated from each other um, and she is taken on a long and treacherous journey through the wilderness um, and she experiences the invasions of other English settlements that um, and she sees a lot of terrible things um, she is taken on a long journey um, and she is eventually sold to another Indian who is related to King Philip and so she has a plan to meet King Philip and beg for her release and eventually she does end up um, meeting King Philip and he tells her that she will be released in two weeks um, but it takes a lot longer than that um, and she is eventually um, released and reunited with her husband and a little while later um, they reunite with their children and they get to go back and um, move to a new town and rebuild their lives and live their lives after their captivity and she 
wrote down her experience um, of her captivity and it is one of the most famous captivity narratives today. Um, so in conclusion, I um, hope that you got a really good understanding of captivity narratives and that this makes you excited to go and read one.